Hello, Star Wars Galaxy Hero players. This is Andy Tesoro. Today, I'm going to be talking about uh, the kits of the reworked kits of Bastila and HK47, as well as I'm going to talk a little bit about Death Mark and Taunt. So, there's some good news and some annoying, sad news. But the good news, so some good news is, is changes to Death Mark and Taunt. So, it'll be making some changes to Death Mark and how it interacts with Taunt and marked debuffs in preparation for De Darth Revan. Who will use a death mark mechanic currently taunt and marked take priority over death mark but death mark will be changed to have equal priority which is good especially in i'm sure in, in raids it'd be too bad for example in current battles if you marked one enemy and death marked another you had to target the marked character after the update you'll choose either one or the other please note that the character who ignores taunt has always has always also ignored death mark and marked this will not be affected by changes above okay that's good so for the character at least ignores taunt that's that's a good thing now for the sad news so i want to quickly show off hk47's current kit superior firepower so for the most part the rework of hk47 i like it's just these two abilities here are very very dismal and disappointing and I have a few suggestions to improve it, but until then, yeah, obviously I have no control over that or say so. Also, one of the things I've always wanted to see is HK47 get a second special ability, which they do, but then they also get two uniques. So the, the, he's like a a mini um, journey character when he's not, though. So it's kind of, yeah. So you can kind of see here, I'll swap back and forth, but let's see. So he's dark side. Attacker, droid, and now he's a Sith Emperor. This is a new tag, so it makes me wonder if like characters like Sith Trooper are gonna get Sith Assassin, Sith Marauder are gonna get the Sith Empire tag, which means we might get, I think it's Saul Kareth. Uh, he could be the Admiral. He can get his ship, and then either his ship or Darth Malak's ship, whichever you know. But he could be a leader to just Sith Empire characters, which would be kind of cool, like one of those little mini Sith care uh, Sith. Um, uh, small Sith uh, factions, kind of like Phoenix and Imperial Troopers are. Um, do a devastating droid attacker that excels at taking down Jedi enemies. Okay. So basic. Request. Die, meatbag. I like the name change. I like the name change from Superior Firepower. Because then they can save the Superior Firepower to another character. Problem solved. But request die meatbag i like this i just wish there was some more of this callback to hk47 and the way he talks but deals physical damage to our enemy and gain offense up for two turns this attack has 30 percent critical damage against debuffed enemies so he gets more damage that's good offense up he used to have 55 percent chance to gain offense up they got rid of that oh that's good it's 100 percent chance he'll gain offense up which is good so if he's called in to assist with ig86 he's gonna get offense up good I'm sure the damage, you know, will be up, up here and there. Like, this is probably going to be up about a thousand and maybe a thousand. I don't know. But Meatbag Mayhem goes to Havoc. I, I, I don't know. I, I like the name Meatbag Mayhem. It made more sense than Havoc. They could save Havoc for another character. But deal true damage. It's kind of like uh, uh, Droidica has that kind of thing. Ignores defense, but can't be critically hit to all enemies and half that amount an additional time to each debuffed enemy. Then inflict tenacity down on all enemies for two turns. This attack deals 20% more damage for each Jedi enemy and it can't be countered. So I like that it can't be countered. I will admit I do miss all these buffs that he can inflict like ability block, speed down. I, I, I was always saying you know they can add stagger, daze, and even target lock. I mean, they could at least still add target lock on this. <laughs> Tenacity down and target lock for don't all enemies for two turns. That's kind of cool. This kid is unfortunately no target lock synergy, which is sad. Special two assassination protocol. Uh, this one, this name could have been statement assassination protocols active or something like that. <laughs> um, dispel all buffs on target enemy. Well, that's good. Deals physical damage to that enemy. This attack can't be evaded. And deals 100% more damage against Jedi. So it really gets around the, the evasion meta that Yoda has made. Um, if the target enemy has death mark or fear, this ability's cooldown is reset. Also, it starts on a cooldown of 9. Ugh. 
The ability stats on cool this ability starts on cooldown and the cooldown is reduced by one when an enemy is inflicted with fear. So definitely some synergies with Fallen Bastila. And we'll get into her kit in a minute. Um So yeah, this is a cool ability. I like it. I just wish this was the ability that also inflicted death mark for two turns. Because there's no synergy with death mark. Unless Revan get and Revan's gonna have death mark, but that's it. It's like really? So Assassination Protocol should have, you know. At least inflicted death mark on his own, um, which would have been after this of effect. So then, then inflict death mark because I think assassination protocol should have inflicted death mark. <laughs> I'm already criticizing how his kit is. I do like the kit, or at least the reworks. I do like the new ability. Uh, this is where it really gets sad. So we'll be resetting and returning the ability materials that we used on HK47's leader ability. You can find out more details here, which I've already talked about in a previous video. So, Droid Allies have 30% crit chance, which stayed the same. And it used to gain 50% turn meter. They added 20% crit damage and 10% turn meter on a critical hit. So dismal. So if you critically hit 5 enemies, you'll get at least 50% uh, turn meter, which is still sad. Sad. So, honestly, the turn meter would have been great. So this is a few things I'm now suggesting to this. Turn meter would have been great, but I would at least kept it at least at 25. So at least if you hit four enemies, you can attack again at least. So there is some RNG dependency on that. But outside of that, it's disappointing. Really disappointing. So, and honestly, with his new ability, Havoc, ignores defense but can't critically hit. What's the point of this on that ability? Droid allies, I feel like since they destroyed this ability, they should just get rid of it. I feel like one of two things could have happened. This could have been a Zeta. I know that there's two Zetas already on the kit, which I'm going to talk about these two in a little bit. Um, they should e either give a Zeta and give some potency. There's no, no, um, not target, uh, target lock. There's no target lock synergy. So why don't we see that? Um, so here's two things. If you want to keep it in an Omega ability, I would say just strip everything that was there. Give it give droids health 50 percent. i know this is going to be unique and it, i don't want to make this too overpowering but adding anything else wouldn't matter in a sense but at the same time would but this could be just one of those basic um omega abilities that say 50 percent uh potency because i feel like droids under hk should get some potency 50 percent defense 50 percent health steal and 50 percent critical or counter chance so he's a he gives droids the chance to counter. I feel like that would change how droids are played. Yes, you lose the turn meter because they had to get rid of it, especially since this. But then you could also just get rid of this um, true damage kind of stuff and go with um, go with counter chance, or you could keep this because by now, thanks to Droidica um, B1 and now. Um, HK47, or it's, it's this turn meter gain is just now useless. The crit chance, crit damage, especially on this ability, it's useless now. I feel like changing it up, like even even if you don't do counter chance, or I don't I don't know. I I feel like that something could have been done better. Also, when with, with potency, if you don't do, let's say you don't do health still, and instead of that you throw in uh, whenever they whenever they inflict a debuff or something to do with target lock, finding a way of adding target lock. Whenever they damage an enemy that's not evaded, target lock the enemy. Makes sense. But they destroyed it. They destroyed that. HK's uh, self... So, it used to be reconstruction. 75% to revive at 30% health the first time defeated. They got rid of that completely. What I do like about it, though is whenever a buff expires on an enemy, HK recovers 5% health protection. So he's going to recover health and protection like against uh, Rex-led teams. That's good. When HK uses this ability during his turn, it deals 25% more damage, or an ability. Let me reread that. <laughs> it deals 25% more damage to... If the target is death mar has death mark or fear. Eh, I just... I, honestly, this one should be... If they're... Um, debuffed if they were if they have a debuff do 25 percent more damage but then again at the same time it's really good um with death mark and fear so you can do the sith raid a lot better so honestly 
I they got rid of the reviving, which they should have kept. They could have upped their reviving so that just the first time, like the Zeta says, the first time HK dies or goes to 1% health, he is, you know, healed up to 50% health and protection. Done. Nothing too broken. It gets him back in the game. Maybe give him some turn meter, like 50% turn meter, so that he's back in the game ready to go. Because if you go through Coder 1 into Coder 2, he had to be reconstructed. From Coder 2 to Swotor twice, he was reconstructed. So, honestly, they should have kept the reviving mechanic in it. They really butchered HK, and I'm really disappointed. CG could have been doing a lot better. Now, his loyal to the maker ability as a Zeta as well, which I think this is a waste of a Zeta in my opinion, but then again, at the same time, probably not. Uh, anyway, so if Darth Ray Revan is leader, he ha HK has... 50% defense, offense, potency, tenacity. That's amazing. 30% crit avoidance for each Jedi enemy. So he's not gonna he's gonna get to the point where he can't be critically hit. Awesome. Cooldown of assassination protocol is reset the first time another Sith Empire is defeated. So I feel like I'm assuming Sith Trooper is gonna be a Sith Empire. Um, right now we all oh, only know that Bastila Fallen is a Sith Empire. Um Enemies with protection up can't gain bonus turn meter. So I do like a lot of this. But it only requires you to be... you can. So it's to the point where HK is no longer effectively a droid leader. They just they just took him away from that. They really destroyed him. They only want HK to work with Revan. And I, I get that. But people that aren't going to be ready for Revan, I still want to use HK. But now I really don't want to use him as a leader. I want to go... I'm going to have to go to Urza Tron style and work on my Lobot. Just to give me at least a decent droid leader at least hk would be you know better in this leadership role but this unique is dead unless you have revan this unique is like i do like this and i do like this but they could have kept the reviving and then just the leadership is just horrible the other abilities i feel like are great still i, I could say yeah then add death mark but outside of that they're great they're great so on to bastila fallen so i'm just gonna just show this really quick if you want to pause the video, go for it. Um, but I'm going to get into the, her kit really quick. So she's a Sith support, Sith Empire. Note, Fallen Bastila is losing the Old Republic category tag. Makes sense. She doesn't really need to be Old Republic. Um, however, however, I do see HK getting it because he worked both sides, light side, dark side. He was still an Old Republic character, so he deserves to have that. Um, especially if you wanted to, and also just so you know, there's no synergy with T3 and 4, so there's just that gone. Oh, CG, really? Just destroy HK mostly. Like, he's good with Revan, that's it. But anyways, going back to it though, sorry. <laughs> um, a lot of her basics are the, all right, except they've reworked. Um, so let's reread Fear. Stun target enemy for one turn with an 80% chance to stun another, which can't be evaded. Uh, when, when each of these stuns expire, inflict offense, defense, evasion, speed, expose, and stagger for two turns. These effects can't be resisted. So that was that. They reworked that entirely. No more stunning. Inflict fear on target enemy and another random enemy for one turn. Which is actually a better stun in a way. Which can't be copied or dispelled. When each of the fear... When each of these fear expire... Fears expire... Then you inflict all this stuff, which can't be resisted. All other enemies inflicted with offense down, defense, etc. All other enemies are inflicted with offense, defense, and all that for stagger for two turns. Fear. The ability fear, the new ability. Miss the next turn. Can't use abilities. Can't and can't evade. Increase cooldowns by one and fear expires uh, on taking damage from an attack. So... It's better and worse than stun. Let's put it that way. Stun, being better than stun is, yeah, it's kind of this same stuff. But stun also does not increase cooldowns by one. Where what's worse about stun or fear compared to stun is it does expire on being attacked. But when it's attacked, it'll start inflicting all these. So if you have a, a double tap ability, like say Django Fett's basic, for example, you could double tap or you can single tap and then it'll trigger everything and then double tap and then the turn meter's gone. Now, unique, Force Bond. Final text. If Darth Revan is in the leader slot, Bastila and Darth Revan have 70% health and health steal. Wow. 
And Darth Revan recovers protection from corrupted battle meditation. And enemies inflicted with corrupted battle meditation bleh, can't inflict debuffs on enemies when they use an ability, excluding raid bosses. So that's cool. If Jedi Knight Revan is on the enemy squad, Bastille gains advantage and foresight for one turn at the start of Jedi Knight Revan's turns. So he gains... Wow, that's insane. So I think for the most part... That is going to be huge every turn. Like, yes, it does not. It, now, if this said, if Jedi Knight Riven's the enemy, Bastila and the leader get advantage in Foresight, I feel like that would be cool. <laughs> so that at least, it, like, if you're running her with Treya, it makes, you know, Treya teams a little better until people get Darth Revan. But outside of that, this is a really great kit. So I'm excited for Bastila Fallen Sean. I'm just disappointed with HK. So sad. So sad. But other than that, let me know what you guys think in the com thanks in the comments below. Comment in the comments below about your thoughts on these reworks. Do you like them? Do you dislike them? Who wants HK to be better? Who doesn't? You know, post all that in the comments below. Again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate all those who watch the videos I make. And you guys have a wonderful day.